Guys, all the cars that you see in these videos are for sale on my website, www.woodsandbarclay.com. Enjoy the video. Hey everybody, welcome back to, I think this is part five in the video series for the 1984 300D. Now we are on the home stretch and please keep in mind there's four other videos on this car that show every detail about what has been done. Uh, so please check them out. You can see them on YouTube and they're probably also on the website woodsandbarclay.com. But today we're going to focus on I think four things and again we're on the home stretch. We're going to remove the fuel sending unit and make sure that's clean. That's what controls the uh, fuel uh, level gauge. Uh, it's common for those to get gummed up with uh, old dirty diesel. Uh, you know, diesel is dirty and it has a bunch of gunk in it, and those things will often get uh, clogged up. So we're going to clean that. Uh, we're going to change the primer pump on the side of the uh, injection pump. The uh, originals often will leak if you try to use them, so we go ahead and put the new upgraded Bosch version on all our cars. Uh, we're also going to do a clock repair. I noticed the clock is not working, so we're going to change the capacitors. We're going to check the dimmer switch uh, on the gauge cluster and check the bulbs. And I'm also going to do the uh, door striker eyelets. That's the little rubber tab that allows uh, the doors to shut smoothly so you don't have to slam them, slam them. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're going to start with the low-hanging fruit here. Um, the first item, you see I've removed the uh, uh, first aid kit box. And down inside there, you can see there's the plug on the fuel sender, uh, fuel level sender. We're going to go ahead and take that plug off, unscrew that sender, get it out of the car and clean it. And then I'm going to focus on the door striker eyelets. See this little rubber tab here? There you go. See how it's like broken off? So they're, they're never broken off on the back doors. It's always the front doors because the back doors never get used. So you can see that tab is still intact here on the back door. And notice how good the back door shuts. See how nice that shuts? Well, when that little rubber tab breaks off, watch the front door. See that? It didn't shut. You have to slam it a little harder and it will shut. And what that tab does, right here on the striker, this little latch right here, touches that tab like a millisecond before the door shuts and it kicks back kicks back the latch and lets the door shut smoothly and when that's broken off that that process doesn't happen so we're going to go ahead and work on that now first let me get the fuel uh, level sender out and then we're going to remove the door striker all right you can see i've already removed the first aid kit there's just a screw here and a screw there you take those out and that whole kit pops out and down here we're going to remove the plug on the fuel level sender. Just we'll set that aside. And then we have this tool here. It's a socket. You can get these at Mercedes Source. I'm sure there's some other online sellers, or you can make your own. We're going to stick that on there, and then we'll turn it with our ratchet and unscrew it and get it out of there. <clears throat> All right, guys, cleaning these fuel sending units is very easy. Um, I have a tool that I made. You can see it's two little prongs there and those slip into two little slots I don't know if y'all are going to be able to see that there you go see those two little slots on the end of that nut all right there we go so I'm just going to set that up there and then you can pull out the fuel level sender and we can see that there's some gunk and debris not sure if you can see that there's a Bunch of junk down in there. It's just from old dirty diesel. So you can take all that apart. All right. There we go. That is now cleaned out. We got all that gunk out of there. There we go. See how smooth that operates? See how good and uh, how smooth the bobber rides on there now? That'll make sure you get an accurate fuel level reading. We're just going to slide this back up here. And 
Here we go. All right. Hear it? Perfect. Let's go put this back in the car. All right. We're in the car. Let's turn on our light here. Here we go. And I'll put the key in and we can see the fuel gauge. Bam. Pops right up. And that's exactly correct. That's about how much fuel we have. Okay. You can see the striker assembly right there. There's four Allen head uh, bolts. Now I use a uh, impact to get it off of there because you don't want to strip these and an impact does it the best way. There we go. All right, and when I take this off of here, I can see there is one shim behind there. So we'll just put that shim in the floorboard that's how it goes. All right, guys, fixing this rubber tab is very easy. You pull out the insert. See? Let's see. Let me turn it around. Okay, first, there's that rubber tab that breaks off there. So you pull out the insert, and you can see that's a separate piece. That tab is not, there you go. See, it just it crumbles. It falls apart. So we'll get that all out of here. Okay, there you go. See, there's where it fits, right there. Go ahead and get the okay, we'll go ahead and get the uh, old little tab out of here. All right. Then we'll grab one of the replacement pieces. And there we go. There is the replacement piece that slips in there. There we go. See that little piece? Slips in there like that and pushes through the hole right there. Our striker lines up with the slot there. We push it back together. And that's it, guys. That's repaired. Our tab is now back in place, and that'll allow the door to shut correctly. So I'm going to go reinstall this real quick, um, and then we'll uh, come back and record how the door shuts. Okay, guys, we have our new... Uh, striker eyelet installed. Watch how easy this door shuts now. See? Don't have to slam it anymore. Shuts normal. That's how you fix that, guys. Okay, and of course we have the same issue over here on the driver's side. See the little tab is broken off. I mean the passenger side. Watch how the door shuts right now. Hang on, let me do it a little harder. See, it won't, it doesn't latch. You gotta slam it. See, if you slam it, it latches. So, I'm not gonna bore you guys with showing how to remove this again, but I'll remove it, fix it, put it back on, I'll show you the final result. All right, guys, you can see we've got the passenger side replaced. So let's show you how this side closes. There you go. Don't have to slam it at all. Close is perfectly fine now. All right, now let's move up to the fuel primer pump. Okay, guys, now we're going to change the uh, uh, fuel filter. This is the, pri uh, the pre-fuel filter, and here's your primary fuel filter. But what I want to show you is the primer pump. So these old original primer pumps, the way you work them, you unscrew them. There we go. And then, once they unscrew... They function as a pump, and you can pump and prime your fuel system, and then you screw them back down. Well, there's an O-ring that seals it once you screw it back down. Those O-rings are notorious for leaking uh, when the vehicles get, you know, 30, 40 years old. So, we go ahead and remove these primer pumps and install a new and improved Bosch primer pump. Here it is right here. Now, this one you don't have to unscrew. You just pump it. And these are much better, they don't leak. So let's go ahead and get this old one off of here. All right guys, there is no easy way to just remove this primer pump. The way you do it, this is the best way I've found. You gotta get these vice grips down here and wiggle it through all the mess underneath here. Ah, got it. That is, uh, that's not 
easy the first time you do it. Hopefully my head was not in that video. Like I said, the first time you do that, guys, it's not easy. Um, you gotta get the wrench exactly in the right position. And you also don't want to accidentally hit your plastic fuel line next to it and rupture it. But we can now just unscrew this thing. Come on. And there we go. There's the old primer pump and there's that O-ring. See, when you unscrew it to, to pump it, it comes up and then you can pump. But when you screw back down, that O-ring is supposed to seal it and that thing will leak and it's just a mess. So we also have to remove a crush washer that's in there. Yep, there it is right there. You see that? See that shiny piece right around there? That's a crush washer. We got to get a little pick and take that out because the Bosch pump will include a new crush washer. You can see that. See it right there, that copper crush washer. So let's go ahead and get the old one out of here. There we go. And I just dropped it on the ground down there. I want to kind of keep my finger on that crush washer so it doesn't fall off. And we'll get it placed on top of there. The crush washer's in place. And then we can start to screw it down by hand. And then I use a, it's a 17 millimeter or a 15 sixteenths crow's foot to tighten that. I'm sorry, I said uh, 17 millimeter or 15 sixteenths. Uh, it's 11 sixteenths is what's equivalent uh, to the 17 millimeter. And see, that's called a crow's foot. So you can come down and get access to the side and turn it. There we go. And there you go guys. That is on there. There you go. There's our primer pump. And this one you can actually use your hand, see, to pump that. So let's go ahead and change our uh, pre-fuel filter right there and our primary fuel filter right there. All right, changing your pre-fuel filter is easy. Here it is right here. So you just have two Phillips head screws to undo the uh, band clamps or hose clamps that hold it in there. So we'll undo this one here. And you gotta get a short little stubby screwdriver to get down in there. And guys, these are uh, a thing that you need to service most often on a diesel Mercedes because if you don't service this, you'll be driving down the road, down the interstate, you know, at 70 miles an hour, all of a sudden you'll start slowing down and your top speed will only be like 40 miles an hour and, and there's no acceleration. And you'll be like, oh my God, I've destroyed my engine. What's going on? No, it is just a dirty pre-fuel filter. That's why you keep these in your glove box. You just keep one in your glove box. And when that happens, you pull over to a gas station, pull out your little stubby wrench, go down here and undo it, pull it out of there and change it like we're going to do right now. Okay, got a replacement filter here. I like to use Hankst. Uh, they make good stuff. These things are cheap, like four bucks or so. And we're just going to pull out this filter. And you want to put your finger over it. When you pull it out, or it's going to leak everywhere. And it's okay, you're going to get diesel everywhere, guys. And also, you want to put your thumb over the return line to the tank. I mean, over the tank, the uh, send line from the tank. And we'll just push that guy back in there. And we'll push it back in there. And then we'll just tighten it back up. So if we hold this down here, watch the fuel filter there. See if I can do this. There we go. See it filling up with fuel? Let's keep going. See the fuel coming in there? Now I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it all uh, clean down here. You see there, I got some diesel there and there's diesel all over there. And then we'll go ahead and change our main fuel filter. Okay, to remove this main fuel filter, I think that's a 22 or 24 millimeter. Appears to be a 24, there we go. There we go, we're just going to loosen that guy up.
if you have a thinned walled socket, you can usually get it on here. Um, so it'll clear the, it has to clear the gap for the uh, return hose. If you have a thin walled socket, you can get that on there. I don't have one, so I just use this. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and loosen that. And then we should be able to spin our fuel filter off from the bottom. Now, guys, you're gonna get diesel everywhere when you do this. That's okay. rag under there. Here we go. And it just unscrews. There we go. All right. Then we just slip it out the side there. Okay, guys, there is <clears throat> here's our the Napa filter that we took off of there. And I like to use the man filter, what, 814 slash 1. And you see the man filter is a little bit bigger diameter. Um, but the gasket, it's the same size on the top. I like to use man. Napa's fine. They're, Napa makes good stuff. But I always use man. Um, so first you want to fill with uh, diesel. You want to fill it with diesel. Otherwise, you're going to have air bubbles in your system. And it's going to be hard to start. So if you fill it all the way up before you put it back on the car, you should be able to fire up the car and uh, not get air bubbles into your system. There you go. See, I mean, I filled that to the brim, like all the way. It's spilling over. That means there's absolutely no air in there. So let's let that soak down for a second. I'm gonna knock a little off of there. There we go. And uh, let's go ahead and put this back in the car. All right. Now, we're going to go ahead and try to fire the car back up. Sometimes what happens is uh, it'll fire up for like five seconds, and then it'll get an air bubble in there, and it'll die, and we'll have to crack this uh, union fitting right here. Outlet on the filter. See the arrow is outlet. We'll crack that loose, and then we'll bleed the air out there by cranking it for like 10 or 15 seconds, usually about 10 seconds, and then we'll tighten it back up. But if we're able to purge the air out of there correctly, we should be able to fire the car back up. Okay, guys, this is actually a cold start. It's been sitting all night. Let's see. Blow plugs. Let's see if we can get this thing fired back up. Here we go. There's the air pocket. Oh, oh, come on. There we go. We got past it. So, perfect. Got a filters changed. Now, what we want to do is tackle the, uh, the dimmer switch and the clock the clock's been at 610 since yesterday so that clock is not working so we're going to go ahead and remove the gauge cluster and fix both of those items and then we're going to check the bulbs back here and make sure they're working too guys okay i actually noticed <laughs> okay we turns out we do have a cluster light that is on over here it's very dim and it's out on the right side. Um, this one was so dim, I didn't notice it was on. See, there's where the bulb shines through. And over here, this one's dead. Um, and I noticed, there you go, you can barely see it there. And if I move the dimmer, oh, we lose it. There we go, it's a little brighter there. So that's our dimmer switch that's screwed up. And it looks like we have a bulb that's out on the right side. So let's go ahead and take care of that. All right, there we go. Now we got to disconnect. All right, now we need to get the oil sender. And that's a 10 millimeter. There we go. And guys, once that's undone, you do not want to crank the car. Uh, because if you do that, it is going to shoot oil everywhere. All right. Let's go ahead and get this over to the bench and fix our clock and our dimmer switch. All right, guys. So what we're going to do, we're going to remove the uh, old dimmer switch. And, yep, that is definitely an original dimmer switch. Get that out of here. 
install a new one. Yep, there we go. See all it's it's like corroded up in there. The that's what happens. See that white, like flaky stuff? That's like a ceramic that like corrodes and see the back pieces are corroded. Here is our replacement dimmer switch from Mercedes. 00542-3625. All we gotta do is replace this guy. Gotta get the Gotta get the little slot lined up with our switch here. There we go. Then that just pushes back down on there. Yep, and that's working. Very easy to change that, guys. All right, now the clock is right here. We want to remove that. And we want to change the old 40 year old capacitors in that clock. They, uh, they drift out of value and then they don't hold the right uh, capacitance and the clock can no longer tick. Pull our clock out of here. All right, we're going to move our gauge cluster out of the way. Okay, guys, you can see. Here's the clock. There's the clock mechanism. We have to replace those two capacitors. Take out the screws for the RPM gauge. Those are right here because we have to lift up the RPM gauge just a little bit to get the clock uh, circuit board out. <clears throat> if you have basic soldering skills, guys, you can do this. <clears throat> that one's in there kind of tight. Okay, that loosens up the tachometer. Now these two hold the clock in, or these three down here. All right, we're gonna take our needles off. And I use a little microchip puller to get that one off right there. There we go, a little microchip puller here, like that. Just put it around here. Pull that one off there. Now we have to hook up the soldering iron. That right there is the ground. See, that's where it grounds the clock. There's power, there's ground. So we need to break that little solder bead loose to push the clock pieces through. If you have a, a, a shaky hand, you probably won't be able to do this job. These are very small. Let's touch the solder right back here and melt it. And then, oh, there we go. And then push the clock through. And there we go. We can see <laughs> that the clock just came through and we can set uh, our RPM gauge back there and just set this aside. Peel off this little protective, it's like a uh, little foam pad that goes on the back. Peel that guy off and just set that aside. And there's our capacitors and there is a negative leg. See negative, negative. So we wanna make sure when we put in our replacement capacitors we can see, there we go. That's the negative leg right there. Positive leg is the longer one. We want to put them back in the right spot. So I'm just going to melt the solder on the back of these while I'm pulling out that capacitor. All right, got that one out. And 
and we got that one out. Now, let's push in our new ones. I can see the negative leg is there. Have to melt that a little bit to get that one to go through. All right, we have our negative leg over there. And let's put our other one through there. The negative leg is right there. Melted a little bit to go through. All right, there we go. Now I'm just confirming that the short legs, see one of those legs is short, that's negative, and the short ones are through negative here and negative there. So those are correct. So we have our fresh capacitors in there. Now we just need to solder them in there. All right, I'm gonna put a little bead of solder there. Here we go. And there we go, that one's done. Now I'll just flip it over. This doesn't take much, it's just a slight touch. And you wanna be careful you don't burn your circuit board or burn your trace. There we go. And there we go. Now let's clip off those extra legs. And there we go, guys. Two fresh capacitors installed and soldered back to our board. Okay, here's our gauge cluster, and I think it was the uh, passenger side or the right side bulb that was burned out. So I just want to. Okay, the mechanism that reflects the bulb uh, down into the uh, cluster is still intact. So we're going to go ahead and just unscrew that bulb, take it out, and we're going to go ahead and replace this bulb. Okay, here's our replacement bulb, and we'll stick that right down in there. And we're going to replace the other side too, just to make sure. Go ahead and take that one out over here. There it goes. And we'll take that bulb out. We'll put our replacement bulb in. There we go. Now let's go ahead and put our clock back in there. All right, let's get this back in the car. We're gonna go ahead and set the clock to the correct time, which is 3, 25, 26, a little bit more. There we go. And we're gonna come back in a few minutes, see if it says 3.30, and turn on our headlights, and let's adjust our dimmer switch. Bam! Look at that. Our dimmer switch and 
is now correctly working. Those are very bright. It's brighter in person than in the camera, guys. And we also have all of the lights and all the accessory items down here. And if you look at our clock, boom, it is ticking. I set it a couple of minutes ago at 326. Now we're like at 327, 28. We'll double check that in a second and we'll make sure we hit 330. All right, guys, you can see we are at like 329. The clock is correctly working. So that's it for this video. We've knocked out a lot of items. Uh, and guys, we are pretty much done with this car. The next thing, uh, I'm gonna get some new tires mounted and run it up to the alignment shop, get an alignment. And then it goes over to Scott for detailing. And then this vehicle is done. So hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. Take care. And there you go, guys. 3.30.